All right, back on the Young Turks, third hour. Uh, Anna Kasparian is here, uh, and she's going to take it from here. I am, I am. By the way, that's my favorite rage song. That song makes me feel empowered, like I can do something to change the world. Yeah! Yeah, Renegade! <laughs> We're going to stop the deep capture of the American government! Or whatever. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, so uh, we got a controversy right off the bat. Yeah, Barack Obama is bashing Kanye West. Okay. So <laughs> all this time you didn't do anything against the Republicans. Okay. And you let him go and you let him slide on the public option and all the death panels and stuff like that. And the one guy you got to hit is Kanye West. So that's how you're going to do, huh? It's it's funny. It's funny because everyone's making a big deal about it, and it's really not that big of a deal. So there was an off-the-record portion of his interview with CNBC leaked. Uh, apparently an ABC reporter tweeted out what Obama said um, about Kanye West, and it turned into a big media uproar. And we have an uproar. We, we have do. an uproar. We also have audio of this. Okay, now, first the ABC guy does that. now, But it was off the record, so he shouldn't have. Right. So then he erase this tweet mm -hmm. okay which is funny uh, but then TMZ got a hold of the audio anyway right so let's uh, listen into what the president said well your girls as hacked off as mine were that Kanye gave <laughs> Taylor Swift the Joe Wilson treatment I thought that was really inappropriate yeah. you know I mean it's like she's getting an award what are you button in I, I, I hear you I, I agree with you <laughs> I, would, I hope I. I, I Does that count as the first question? That, <laughs> the young lady seems like a perfectly nice person. She's getting her award. What's he yeah, doing why would up he there? Do that? He's a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> this, all this stuff. <laughs> I'm assuming all this stuff. Where's the pool? Come on, guys. Let, cut the president some slack. I got a lot of other stuff on my plate. Okay. Yeah, because I remember last time there was the fly thing. That was the highlight of the... Uh, <laughs> now, that worked out well for you. That was. Uh, you were a ninja. Except Peter. And Reggie, uh, Reggie has the plot released in about seven minutes. <laughs> yeah. God, the rest of that was so boring. Okay. Yeah. Don't care. Like, the rest of that conversation was a snooze fest. Uh, but, okay, first of all, obviously, controversy, controversy. Right. What do I... We had a controversy over here. Uh, he called Kanye West the jackass. <gasps> No! Now, here's the thing. It is going to be entirely uncontroversial because who's going to be upset at that? No right. one's going to be no upset one. at that. Everybody's going to be in favor of that, right. right? Now, if he'd called like a country star a jackass, then you know what the Republicans would have done. Yeah, they would have panicked, like, yeah. And, no, and they would have made it racial, right. and they'd be like, oh, yeah, of course! There you go, supporting, you know, the. Oh, my God, imagine. If he'd supported a, a black singer over a white singer, mm -hmm. now he's he's supporting the white singer over the black singer, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like that, right? It's there's nothing to it that's racial or anything like that. But you know they would have gone in that direction, mm -hmm. okay? So anyway, so now you're not pissing off like what the Taylor Swift fans. You're not pissing off Republicans. You're not pissing off Democrats. Who are you pissing off? Kanye West supporters? Maybe. I don't know. I, I, I honestly didn't really care. So he said he said Kanye West is a jackass. Okay, whatever, fine. Anna, we have a national controversy. How could you not care? <laughs> All right, so the bottom line for me is I think it plays really well for him. I mean, look, if you're going to look at the political side of this, I know it's goofy, okay? But uh, he seems like he's calling a guy a jackass, but he's doing it off the record. But it's leaked, so everybody gives him credit for it, but he doesn't seem impolite. He yeah. doesn't seem rude. So he gets none of the downside of it. You see what I'm saying? Well played, Barack. Well played. Okay. And the rest of the conversation was, of course, about how he swatted the fly, and he's right. like, don't leak this. But in fact, as the guy said, you seem like a ninja, he said. Did you hear that? Yeah, yeah. He's like, you were great. And he's like, oh, not with PETA, la, la, la. And then, but the reason I bring all that up is because no matter what the president says, even if he's a Republican or a Democrat, Every single thing has to be greeted by, <laughs> the president is so funny. Can, can people crawl up out of his ass for a second? No, I mean, he, he's a president. If there's <laughs> anyone that you should suck up to, it's the president. Uh, yeah, no, not buying it. I think you would suck up to the president a little bit. Me? No, hell no. I'd be like, yeah, whatever, Brock, okay? <laughs> be cool, be cool. Hold on, man. I'm doing a show. I'll get to you.
All right. All right. Look, I, be respectful, but you don't have to laugh at everything he says is like the world's greatest joke. Right. You see what I'm saying? That's why I'm afraid that he might begin to exist in that whole bubble where everything he does, you know, he has yes sayers around him saying, oh, you're doing a great job. You're doing a great job. So he never has any real criticism. And the only criticism he sees are the lunatics out there, you know, with yeah. the, ah, oh, you're from Kenya. All right. Watch us. And so you're right, that might get, into, get him to a point where he thinks, all right, well, if those, that's my opposition, I must be right. right. And everybody else around me tells me I'm right. And that's a problem for a president, mm -hmm. because I think that there are some things, of course, that he needs some work on. Barack, call me. I'll straighten you out. Um, all right, uh, JR, have we missed anything? No? We nailed it? Okay. All right, we have more Kanye news, uh -huh. so let's get to it. So uh, Kanye West appeared on Jay Leno, mm -hmm. all right, Jay Leno's premiere or whatever. And uh, he apologized again uh, mm -hmm. for doing what he did to Taylor Swift. And, you know, during his apology, Leno basically asked him, what would your mother say to what you did? Are we going to show it? Or? We don't have video of it, unfortunately, because YouTube, they're like Nazis, and there was a copyright infringement on it. Uh, so, so we don't want to deal with the copyright nonsense. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you know, it was kind of a tough question. No, it was a tough question that I did not expect at all from Leno. Leno literally asked him, and he lo and by the way, Kanye West looked like he was about to cry. He was super emotional, and I don't think he was putting on a show. I don't think that it was fake. I think his feelings were sincere. So Leno asks him straight out, if your mother saw what you did, what would she say about it? What would your mother think? And Kanye, like, had a really long pause, and he just looked down, and he just kept, like, you know, rubbing his face a little bit, like, as if he was tearing up. And, you know, he said, you know, she wouldn't be proud of what I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, now, look, a couple of things. Uh, number one, I was right, mm -hmm. not staged, correct? No, 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 no. What did I say you were right about? I still think it's staged. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you're crazy. I no. thought you were right about something else. I forgot uh, number it. two, he thinks that he was trying to do a solid mm -hmm. to Beyonce because he said during the interview, look, I was just trying to help people, mm -hmm. right? In his mind, in his crazy mind, mm -hmm. right? All right, uh, number three, um, Okay, now that we've punished the guy enough, and he's basically cried on TV, because he was quivering, man. Right. I mean, I don't know, you didn't see tears coming down his face, but he was like... <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, enough, enough, okay. And then the president's called him a jackass. All right, it's just... I mean, I'm not sure Chris Brown got, this, got it this bad, right? And, and what's the, all, the whole brouhaha? He interrupted an acceptance switch at the MTV Awards. Let's bring it down. Okay, it wasn't the right move. No right. question. We talked about that yesterday. But he didn't kill anybody. Okay, he didn't hang any dogs. He didn't beat anybody. He interrupted a stupid speech at his MTV Awards. All right, all right, okay, he's cried enough. Um, also, The View interviewed Miss Swift. Yeah. We're going to that? Yeah, I'm yeah, sure I, that's what I was going to next. Yeah. So, I mean, everybody got in this. Everybody got in on the reaction. Of it. I know. I mean, this was a publicity stunt for everyone. Everyone got. I mean, she's still on. I mean, Leno's ratings went up, uh, or he had great ratings, which we'll get to pretty soon. The View got a little piece of that action. Oh, everyone got a little. No, piece. but that's the we thing. We got a little piece of that action. No, but that's what I'm talking about. You know, controversy, controversy. Everybody loves a controversy. Right. You know, if you don't have one, then you invent one. Uh, today, I saw a big headline on Yahoo. I, I got to stop using Yahoo as a news source. Um, what's her face from uh, Plus Eight? Oh. She changed her hair. Yeah, Kate She Gun looks great. It was the hair. It was the hair. No, that's all it was. It was the hair. See, but she I was hating on her for that. She changed her hair. Now I think she looks great. See, but she's having a real conversation about it. That's the big controversy now. If you don't have one, you invent one. Kate Gosselin changed her hair. And she changed her hair. I know. It's so... <laughs> God, I love that sound effect. No, but seriously... Kate Gosselin's signature haircut no longer exists. Wow, that's amazing. I know. That's amazing. So, uh, of course, as I said, everybody benefits from the Kanye controversy. Ultimately, he benefits from it, too. But now that we've done the public flogging, uh, that's why I'm saying let him go. Let right, him right, go. Right. And, and JR um, was getting to a point about what happened on The View, right? Okay. So Kanye apologized on his blog. He apologized on The Leno Show. And then, you know, Taylor Swift was on The View, and the ladies asked her, oh, well, you know, did he apologize to you directly? Did he give you a phone call? And she's like, no, nope, he didn't. And uh, then, uh -oh. Yeah. So then Kanye calls her 
right after the view is over, right after the show is over, to apologize to her personally. Oh, thank God. Oh, whew. for a second there, I thought he was going to be even more guilty, and then we'd have to flog him again. <laughs> That'll show you to never interrupt anyone again. Okay, but now the thing is with the Joe Wilson stuff, everybody's connecting it. And now the theme is, you know, has society become too impolite? Too rude and da da da. Oh, please. We're if, building if our theme. anything, I think it's the other way around. And now, if anyone says something that's even a little out of line, there's a huge uproar. It's so annoying. Look, JR and I were talking about this before the show even started. And I like when people are real. Look, Kanye went way over the line, okay? Mm -hmm. If he, whatever, he went way over the line. But the whole Michael Jordan thing that we were talking about yesterday, that was perfectly fine. Okay, so he didn't go up there and lick everyone's ass. He went up there and <laughs> said what he felt. And I like that. It's genuine and it's not fake. It's not the standard boring vanilla speech. I would like to pause here and say that I prefer the term kiss ass rather than lick ass, which seems far, far too graphic. <laughs> I mean, it, it can't, I can't help but get an image every time you say that, and I'm like, Ew. Licking ass is taking it a little further than kissing ass. It is, but that's it's no, 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 a, but a little like, too far, far for me. It's more than see, just look at this impolite society. You see this? But I like it. This is what society's come to. I feel inspired this week. <laughs> All right. No, no, look, I, as long, if it's not real, like politics, real news, serious news, I love the controversies. Are you kidding me? Right. I get a, a rise out of them. I love it. Mm -hmm. So I love that Kanye did it in the end. Because what happened? Her uh, speech got interrupted a little. <laughs> Who cares? Cook, I hope he interrupts another speech. There. How you like me now? All right. Let's talk about Leno. Okay. All right. So the Leno show uh, premiered last night. Mm -hmm. And uh, the critics hated it, but he had 12 million people watching him. That's a big number. That is a big number. That wasn't in this report. This was in a different report. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so he had huge ratings, but I mean, the con he had Kanye West on. Of course, he was going to have big ratings. But um, a lot of people, for instance, Mary McNamara, she's uh, with the LA Times. She basically said that the Bud Light commercial that interrupted his program was way funnier than the program. Yeah. So she was just kind of telling him, like, oh, you know, your new show sucks. It's pretty much the exact same thing as the Tonight Show, except less funny. That's tough. I, you know, I thought I saw maybe 17 million people watch. I don't. That's there are a lot of numbers floating around. But it, it was mega. Mm -hmm. it, like it did really well because some people were worried that it was not going to do that well uh, in the beginning, right? And if it crashed in the beginning, then NBC was going to have a disaster on their hands, right? Now the thing is, um, I'm not at all surprised. I don't know why anybody's surprised. Could you turn anywhere in America and not see a Jay Leno promo in the last two weeks? Mm -hmm. Everywhere I went, Jay Leno, Jay Leno, Jay Leno. Jay. You thought like that the world was going to end or something. I was like, oh my God, what's going what's to happen on the Jay Leno show? And then everybody tuned in, and we got a little of wang, 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 Debbie Schlussel. Because it was basically the Tonight Show. Yeah. Which, look, I got no problems with. And I, I'm not one of the haters. Uh, you know, and I, it's people, you know why they hate it, okay? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have a secret agenda. It's because a lot of people are in the business of getting uh, of dramas and sitcoms. Mm -hmm. They get hired for writing those. They get hired for producing those, uh, directing, et cetera, et cetera, right? Mm -hmm. And he's put now normally there'd be five of them Monday through Friday at ten o'clock at least, right? Dramas. Um, now there's only one Jay Leno show, so all those people are out of work, mm -hmm. right? So the, and they and if it works, then other networks copy it. Oh boy, then they're in a lot of trouble. So that's why the industry hates the Jay Leno show, and they don't want it to succeed unless they're in the business. Like if they're a talk show writer, yeah, then they're ecstatic. He's got 22 writers on that show, okay? But did I expect anything different than The Tonight Show? No, of course. I knew that it was going to be about 80 to 90% The Tonight Show. Was he going to come out there and do cartwheels? Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's he going to do, put on a soap opera? No, he's going to do The Tonight Show. Yeah, I, was, I, I didn't even think it was anything different. I, was, I didn't know that was going to be one of the criticisms. I mean, Jay Leno's not doing the same damn thing he's been doing for 20 years. Of course he will. It's like the NFL season just started, and the football players just came back. You mean Ben Roethlisberger's playing quarterback? That's what he does. Why, why are we surprised about this? That's what he, he, he left. He came back to the same damn thing. That's what he does. What I don't understand is why it's once a week. Is that, is that the big difference? Because I always wondered why did he stop The Tonight Show? Was it his decision? Oh, 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 I'll break that down for you guys. I thought you knew that. Um, no, uh, it's, 
It's no JR. It's every day. It's Monday through Friday. Okay. Uh, and what happened was he was doing the Tonight Show, and then they had this plan because they didn't want Conan to go anywhere, uh, and they wanted to inject new blood into it because he'd been doing it for 17 years. So they thought it, it'll all work out if we have Conan O'Brien do the Tonight Show, and Jay will retire, right? Mm -hmm. And I think briefly Jay signed on to that, right? Mm -hmm. And then afterwards he pulled a Brad Favre, and he was like, "What am I thinking?" It's like this is the. It, it turns out he's a workaholic. I didn't know this about him, uh, but I've been reading up on him uh, recently because of this show, right? And he de doesn't even take vacations. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's like, retire? What the hell would I do? <laughs> right? So he said, no, 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 I'm coming back. Okay? So now they or had already promised the Tonight Show to Conan O'Brien, and I think there was like an insane penalty if they didn't give it to him, like a $40 million penalty or something uh -huh. in Conan's contract. I, don't quote me on the number, but it was gigantic. Um, so NBC was stuck. Now, meanwhile, and that's why this is so relevant to the television industry, and honestly, why I find it interesting. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, they're getting killed. Their ratings are get, NBC's getting killed, but all the networks are getting killed uh -huh. because people are going to the internet, people are going to cable, and the network's numbers are dwindling, dwindling, dwindling. And based on the revenue that they're getting from those smaller numbers, they can't afford the shows. Mm -hmm. Those shows cost an insane amount of money, the dramas do, okay? So they're like, you know what? We could do a talk show. It's a hell of a lot cheaper. We keep Jay Leno here. He doesn't go to another network. Mm -hmm. Okay? And if he gets lower numbers for a talk show, it's okay because we'll still make money from it. Right. So they kill all those birds with one stone. Now, the downside to it is if it doesn't work, then they ju just blew a giant hole in their lineup. Then they have five hours they have to replace. Mm -hmm. Not half an hour if a sitcom fails, not an hour if a drama fails, five hours. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's why they went all in. And that's why the other networks are like, please fail, please fail, please fail. <laughs> okay, Because if they fail, NBC is like in a, a world of trouble. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole drama behind this. Now, finally, getting back to his numbers from last night, yeah, he does great numbers last night. But of course he was going to do that, in my opinion. The question is, does he hold the audience? Mm -hmm. Right? And they all came in and they're like, okay, you know, I, I, I didn't see it, so I'm not being one of the critics. Uh, I'm just reporting what the critics said about the wang, 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 right? right, right. And my guess is, of, co of course, he's not going to hold that big number. No way. It's not possible. Not possible for, you know, basically a late night show mm -hmm. at 10 o'clock to hold those kind of numbers. But like I said, he doesn't have to hold the whole number. He can hold pro almost a third of that number and still make money. Right. So in the end, will it work out? It's still an open question. But it's an interesting gamble, and it's interesting to see how it works out because of the implications for NBC, for network television, and then eventually for all of television. Mm -hmm. Now you want to know the one last thing that's interesting and why I find it fascinating? Sure. Um, because if it works, there could be other shows that are every day at 10 o'clock on other networks. Uh-huh. I haven't said a word. <laughs> okay, now I'm getting way ahead of ourselves. But mm -hmm. think about it. You see what I'm saying? That'd be awesome. All right. Uh, we're going to take the break. We'll come right back. My body temperature falls. I'm shaking and they breaking, trying to save the dough. Pumping on my chest and I'm screaming. I stop breathing, damn, I see demons Dear God, I wonder, can you save me? I can't die, my boo-boo's about to have my baby I think All right, back on the Young Turks uh, I have found the latest numbers for the Jay Leno show It actually got 18.4 million views What Just, the hell, really? Yeah. That's a lot of people That is a lot of people But look, keep, keep it in perspective too though uh, American Idol regularly gets like I don't think they regularly get 30 million anymore, but I think they regularly get 25 million. So that that's always unbelievable to me. Yeah, that's a lot of people just sitting at home watching TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, look, that's you know, I you're before your time, Anna. Uh -huh. Everybody would sit around and watch TV at home. <laughs> like before, and before you know, you never lived in a time when there was no cable. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, I did. Uh, there were only three networks, uh -huh. so you had to watch one of the three. Uh -huh. Does that seem unbelievable? It, not that unbelievable. What sounds unbelievable to me is when families used to gather around a radio to listen to radio shows. <laughs> that always blows my mind. Because, like, what do you look at? 
Do you stare at the radio? <laughs> you stare at each other? I love that question. Like, you're like kind of uncomfortable. Like, <laughs> what am I supposed to be looking at here? It's kind of weird. <laughs> Look, you gotta understand something. Back then, uh, voices coming into their home from like, if they live in, you know, from a different place, right. let alone if it's across the country, was amazing. Right. Like, like, how could that be possible? He's speaking in New York, and I'm hearing it in Texas. That's unbelievable. So they were like, radio. Now to us, like, radio is like, yeah, okay, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. Right? <laughs> Unless, of course, it's XM or Sirius, and you're listening to the Young Turks. Okay. Anyway. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go forward. Okay, Megan Fox has been slammed by three crew members of Transformers. Slam! Literally slammed. I mean... Not literally slammed. They didn't pick her up and no, slam her. No, I know, I know. <laughs> Verbally slammed. All right. Okay? So, yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. That would be <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> That'd be so funny. <laughs> They're like, oh, yeah, now you had this coming. No, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> okay. So they literally wrote this three or four page long letter about Megan Fox because Megan Fox has been doing her round of interviews and she said that Michael Bay working with Michael Bay is like working with Hitler. Oh. All right. So she's been going around saying some negative things about Michael Bay and these th three crew members were not happy. They were not having it. So it was a very, very long letter um, that they sent to a bunch of different publications. I'm not going to read it all, but I want to read my favorite parts. Go. Okay. So part of it says this. Michael found this shy, inexperienced girl, plucked her out of total obscurity, thus giving her the biggest shot of any young actress's life. He told everyone around, uh, around him to just trust him on his choice. He granted her the starring role in Transformers, a franchise that forever changed her life. She became one of the most Googled and ogled women on Earth. She was famous. She was the next Angelina Jolie. Wait a minute. Two of us worked with Angelina. Second thought, she's no Angelina. You see, Angelina is professional. We know, this, uh, we know this quite intimately because we've had the tedious experience of working with the dumb as rock Megan Fox on both Transformer movies. We've spent a total of 12 months on the set with these two mo uh, making these two movies. So they go on to say that she never smiles. She's a total bitch. She doesn't wave to anyone. She doesn't say hi when they say hi to her. They continue on saying... When facing the press, Megan is the queen of talking trailer trash and posing like a porn star. Uh-oh. Slam! Okay. Ouch. Uh, later on in the letter, they say, Megan says that Transformers was an unsafe set. Come on, Megan. We know it is a bit more strenuous than the playground at the trailer park. <laughs> Oh, slam! <laughs> but you don't install, insult one of the very best stunt and physical effects teams in the business. Not one person got hurt. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, I'd like to weigh in here. First, uh, I, now that I've looked at those pictures of her in Transformers, a couple times I haven't seen Transformers, I now see her, the great acting she did in Transformers. It's basically this. <laughs> no, no, but you're 100% <laughs> right. Just That's what every picture is. Yeah, I know. You're 100% right. I don't think she spoke more than three sentences in that movie. <laughs> it was mostly her <laughs> running around, making that face. <laughs> All right. So now, is working like with Michael Bay the equivalent of working with Hitler? Well, I don't want to get too graphic here, okay? But my guess is that Michael Bay did not exterminate you, okay, to say the least, right? Come on, look, he made you into a mega star with millions of dollars from nothing to being absolutely famous. I, I mean, it's such a, uh, it's to me incredibly offensive to mention Hitler in the same sentence. Right. Okay? Not offensive to Michael Bay, offensive to what, hit, you know, the pe to the victims. I, I don't want to get too heavy on you, right? But to the victims of the genocide. Come on, man. I mean, that's just so callous and. It makes you look so stupid that I don't see how anyone can root for Megan Fox after that. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I see what you're saying. Megan Fox doesn't seem to think before she speaks. Mm -hmm. That's her number one problem. So um, can I give you a little more? Go. Slam her again. <laughs> okay. The letter continues to say, She's about as ungracious a person as you could ever fathom. She shows little interest in the crew members around her. We work to make her look good in every way, but she's absolutely never appreciative of anyone's hard work. Never a thank you. All the crew members have stopped to say hi to Miss Princess because she never says hello back. 
Slam! Okay, okay, all right. And then they, they called her a bitch. Uh, and my favorite part of this letter is when they talk about when uh, the cast and the crew basically went to Egypt, right? And uh -huh. Michael Bay wanted to take them to show, the sh show them the pyramids, right? <laughs> and uh, allegedly, Megan Fox says, I can't believe Michael is fucking forcing us to go to the fucking pyramids. <laughs> yeah, God forbid. <laughs> God forbid you should learn anything about anything and see, like, one of the top tourist attractions in the world. <laughs> okay. You know what? I'm going to change my mind about Michael Bay. He does sound quite evil. <laughs> uh, so, um, look, the ironic side effect of this is that I'm no fan of Michael Bay at all. Uh, his movies don't appeal to me, right? Mm -hmm. um, now I'm rooting for Michael Bay. <laughs> Like, Megan Fox got me rooting for Michael Bay. Oh, you're going to root for Michael Bay even more after I tell you the rest of this story. All right. So, I guess Michael Bay found out about this letter, and he had a response about it, okay. a response to it. He said, I don't condone the crew letter to Megan. I don't condone Megan's outlandish quotes. But her crazy quips are part of her crazy charm. The fact of the matter is I still love working with her, and I know we will still get along. I even uh, expect more crazy quotes from her on Transformers 3. Oh, classy, classy. Classy, which but. leads me to believe they slept together. Oh. Remember the audition? Yes. Okay, I, let, me, let me give a couple of conjectures here. Mm -hmm. One, I love your hypothesis, okay? Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, now it's too late for me to take credit because you said it, right? But as I was, and there was a picture along with that story, right? And I was looking and I was like, man, he's being awfully nice to her, right? What does she have on him? And she's being such a bitch to him. We're thinking that there's going to be no repercussions. It seems like she thinks, I can say whatever the hell I want about this guy, mm -hmm. and nothing's going to happen to me. And it, I had the same thought you did. I'm like, she's got something on him. Right? Remember, and just for our audience, audience members who don't remember, when she was auditioning for Transformers, she went to Michael Bay's house and washed his Ferrari. That was her audition. Yeah, and then he kept the tape. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, kept it in his personal file. So if it's not that they slept together, it's something, right? right? Something that Michael Bay doesn't want getting out. Uh, maybe that's why you shouldn't screw around with your actresses, okay? Because mm -hmm. it could cost you a lot of money later, right? So, but then, and then the final thing, though, is that that crew letter was on Michael Bay's website before he pulled it. And he said, no, 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 I don't condone this. Kind of convenient, if you ask me. Like, oh, look at that. Look at this three-page letter slamming Megan Fox on my website. Mm -hmm. Well, golly gee willikers, I'll have to pull that. And then also remember, he stuck his neck out for her to, to, in hiring her. If he says that she sucks, then he made a mistake. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't want to admit making a mistake either. So there's a lot of play here. Drama. We bring you the drama. And for there's, there's going to be a Transformers 3? Mm -hmm. Is that necessary? <laughs> I, no, I love that question. <laughs> Is that necessary? By the way, go back to that picture. Uh -huh. That was the opening scene uh, for Megan Fox in the movie of Transformers 2. Now, gee, I wonder why Michael Bay hired her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? Is it, what he, yeah, it was between her and Meryl Streep. But at the at last second, he decided to go with Megan Fox. Mm -hmm. Who cares about her acting? <laughs> she doesn't have to act. She just has to lean on a motorcycle like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. That's what she was hired to do, and she did her job. <laughs> All right. Um, no, to answer your question, there is no need for Transformers <laughs> 3. Will it happen? Of course. All right. Because they're, can, cause they still made money from Transformers 2. Whether, here's, I'll answer the question for you. Going forward, this will be your normal formula. If a movie ever makes money, and you ask the question, will there be a sequel? The answer is yes. Until they stopped doing sequels when the last movie did not make money. Meaning, make a profit. Right. You know, you know how you say that every time I go see a movie, I always come back and say I loved it? Mm -hmm. Transformers 2 was a movie that I, I just did not like at all. I tried really hard. I felt the entire thing, there was no real plot. It was just a bunch of explosions and a pretty girl, you know, looking up at them. Slam! <laughs> no, and it makes me wonder. Hold on, I got to ask Jesus something because he's a big Transformers fan. I know he saw the movie. Did you like it? All right, go ahead, big fan of Transformers. What's your answer, huh? I guess that I'm not that big a fan because I didn't even see the movie. Oh, I thought you did see it. <laughs> no, I didn't. I saw the first one, which was okay. Oh, I've been wrong. I mean, just visually, that's all they are. It's just a visual movie. It, the storylines aren't great. Th that's why I don't like Michael Bay, man. I yeah, just that's, that's what I figured, too. That's why I'm like, I'm not going for the storyline. I mean, as a kid, I liked Transformers, but I knew 
<laughs> what it was going to be on the big screen. Not much. Yeah, no, I hear you. I, just, I can't stand the no plot line. It drives me crazy. Yes. And we said, I'm not impressed by the explosions either. Okay, wow. Well, whoa, holy shit, it exploded. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I literally don't get it. The only thing that I find cool, I'll confess, is the destruction of the world movies. When they have shit crashing into things, uh-huh. aliens blowing up the White House. Okay, obviously I don't want the White House blown up, but when in a movie, you're like, oh shit, that's badass. Uh-huh. Life will tower falling down, you're like, oh wow, oh, that's cool. And then like everybody's dead, but a couple of guys are like walking around. Oh, I love that. 28 Days Later. That's like one of my top 20 movies. I loved it. You know what? I'm thinking of seeing that surrogates movie with Bruce Willis. Oh, my God. Because it looks like everybody dies. And then he wanders around. I'm like, anytime a movie's got everybody dying and a couple of guys wandering around, I'm in. That's why I saw that uh, Will Smith movie. What was that where he was driving around in New York? Independence Day. No, no, no. I loved Independence Day because they had everything blowing up. Mm -hmm. The whole world thing. That's the other one. No, the one where it's everybody's died and he's the only one in Manhattan and he cruises around in a car. It's a one big car commercial, the whole movie. <laughs> I'm dying to know what JR was going to say. Yeah, JR. Okay, don't worry about that. Just tell us. Um, well, I'm just curious. Why did you see the second one? Oh, I, I never saw the first one. I went and saw the second one because my boyfriend wanted to see the second one. So I was like, you know what? I've been liking movies lately. Let's go. You know, how, how bad could it possibly be? And I was, I mean, I, I didn't like it. Halfway through it, I just totally stopped paying attention. And I started, like, <laughs> staring around the movie theaters. I was just thinking, that's, that's the <laughs> What movie. do you look at? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I can't concentrate on something that I'm not interested in. Like the Jay Leno story that you sent me. <laughs> No, I was going to say, I, I told her during the break, you know, I was telling that whole long thing about Jay Leno and why it's so important. Uh, and halfway through the story, her eyes glazed over. And she was like, uh, yeah. yeah, that's really interesting. And I told her during the break, she's like, how did you know? <laughs> All right. Now we're having too much fun. All right, we'll figure out the Will Smith movie. I'm still like, Hitch, Fletch, Pound. No, it's something. It's something. All right. If we had the chat room, we'd already know it. Uh, i got to ask Dave about that. All right, anyway, Young Turks will come right back. I'm in favor of that. Uh, all right. Now uh, we uh, went to our crack research staff, uh, found out the Will Smith movie. Uh, I am legend. Uh, we uh, did this amazing thing called we Googled it. Uh, well, actually, Jay, I might have remembered. But anyway, uh, I am legend was the Will Smith movie where he's driving around in this one big car commercial, but I liked it anyway. Time to thank our members. Uh, member number 1242, Noel Clements, joined up on uh, September 3rd of 2008. And then I'm going to go with Jason Bag. Jason Bag joined up on September 10th of 2008. Oh, you know what? I already thanked Noel. Nah. So I'll go with one more. Nigel Moore joined up in uh, August 26th of 2008. Nigel Moore sounds very British, doesn't it? I love the name Nigel. You know, I have a friend. Uh, one of my best friends is named Nigel, and he's not even remotely British. But nonetheless, it always sounds British. Plus, with Moore. Yeah, that's as British as it gets. Well, good day to you, Nigel Moore. We do appreciate you being a member of the Young Turks. 
Uh, now, of course, the members get the whole three-hour show anytime they like. They can podcast it. They can put it on their iPhone. They can plug it into their car, listen to it mm -hmm. like it's radio. Come on. Who doesn't want to do that? They can do video downloads, watch it on TV. Come on. It's too good. So, uh, and then you get the post-game show, too. And in the post-game show today, for members only, uh, we will be interviewing the legendary Dave Kohler. Oh, I'm so excited about that interview. What is the story behind Dave Kohler? Who doesn't want to know that? All right. Let's move forward. All right, Oprah Winfrey had a interview with uh, Whitney Houston. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, and you know Whitney Houston is trying to make a comeback. She's been away from the music industry for a little while. Uh, of course, she went through the drug drug abuse and uh, the split from Bobby Brown. The most interesting part about the interview was when she started talking about Bobby Brown and the reason why she was so attached to him. She liked the fact that he was abusive. And, mm -hmm. and she admits that. She says that she liked the fact that he had control over her life. Yeah, that's, look, that's a very interesting phenomenon. And it's, she's not alone. Uh, this happens for a lot of women who are abused and some who are not abused. But they, look, and it's because it appeals to, to a certain part of women uh, within bounds of reason normally. Mm -hmm. But sometimes women let it get outside the bounds of yes. reason. Okay, so because we were talking about this yesterday, Anna, you were saying that, of course, and, and everybody knows this, women like strong men, mm -hmm. right? Ones who are decisive. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and like one of the problems that Wendy had with some of the guys she dated before, a little, you know, TMI here, mm -hmm. uh, was that they were indecisive. They're like, oh, where should we go to dinner? Oh, like I your... hate that. See, girls can't stand I, that. I hate when, you know, a guy will ask me, where do you want to go to dinner? You know what I want? I want you to figure out where you want to take me to dinner. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, like, and you know, if... Unless, of course, you make the wrong choice, in which case she's going to jump down your throat. <laughs> JR and Jesus in the back, are I in think, the studio going, yes, yes. No, I think it depends on the woman. All right, no, no, no. Let, it depends let, on if she's a woman or um, a woman. Nah, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Uh, what is he saying? No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, you don't want him to spell it out. Don't spell it out. Okay. Look, here's the situation, right? It, it depends on how you play it, to some degree, right? Uh, I took uh, this a previous girlfriend of mine that I went out with for a, later for a long time, right? Um, I, I took her to CPK for our first date, mm -hmm. okay? Um, California Pizza Kitchen. She uh, apparently hates chain restaurants, okay? How was I to know that, okay? What? Right, and I wore Who like hates a- hates chain restaurants? I, it's a lot of girls do, uh -huh. okay? And then I wore a Garfield outfit, his shirt, T-shirt, mm -hmm. and a vest. I look like a giant goofball. Okay, I mean, Aww. she's a giant goofball, and you take her to the worst restaurant she doesn't like at all. Uh -huh. Okay, but of course, but that was our first date. But of course, she went out with me. You know why? Why? Because I was strong. Yeah. I said, I said, we're going to CPK. I'm gonna wear this Garfield T-shirt, and you'll like both of those things. Oh, I picked her up in the worst car made in like you want to talk about cash for clunkers. Uh -huh. They wouldn't even take it. In, okay. Okay. <laughs> that car was like 90 years old. It was like the first car ever made. So despite all that, because I was strong, okay. She went for all of it. So, right. right. Now, on the other hand, <laughs> you come in guns blazing, you play it a little wrong. Yeah. And then she's like, oh, get a load of this guy. Takes me to CPK. Nice dinner. Nice date. Okay. Right. Why don't we just go to Burger King? You know, and it could go disastrously wrong. You have to confess that. I, if, if the guy is way too aggressive and way too, I guess, controlling, yeah, it could go wrong. So. But, but. The whole decisive thing, women want men, or I, I can't say all women, but most women want men that are decisive, that know what they're doing, know where they want to go. It's, it's an attractive trait. I like it. Can all I, right, so can, let me just say two quick things here. One, uh, so go strong, but don't go Bobby Brown. Yeah. Okay. He spit on Whitney Houston's face. Uh, no, 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 no. What can Brown do for you? Apparently, not good things. Uh -huh. Okay, so don't, don't go into, obviously, obviously, right? So don't go too strong. And if you're a woman, yeah, it makes perfect sense to be attracted to strength. It's genetic, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's part of our biology. Don't get me started on evolution, okay? But uh, at the same time, you got to know when something's way too strong. Right, right, definitely. I mean, the minute he crosses a physical boundary, you got to go, man. You got to get out of there. Because if you let him do it once, it's going to happen over and over again. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, on where I draw the line, so finally I got to the point with women. Because, you know, if you take it too strong, so we're going here. That might not work well, but at the same time, you have to be decisive. So I'd give them two options. Mm -hmm. I go, here's where we're going, okay? Mm -hmm. We're either going to Chili's or we're going to, and I maybe give them an upscale option, right? Whatever mm -hmm. that is. For me, it's like 
twenty-five dollar dinner, right, or whatever it is, right? <laughs> we're going to Burger King or we're going to Chili's. Which uh -huh. one would you like? Uh -huh. So that seems decisive, but yet still is asking for her opinion. Right. No, what do you I, think? I think that's a good way to go. I think that's a really good way to go. But then the woman is kind of stuck with the conundrum of, do I sound like a gold digger and go for the expensive option, or do I go for the cheap no, option? No, no, and then that's where I step in, because I could read people, you know? So if she goes, uh, both are good, we could do Burger King, you go, okay, Chili's, let's go. Yeah, that's, that's exactly, exactly how a woman would respond. Come to on, that. come on, come on! Okay, all right. How good am I? You're good. <laughs> By the way, since we're talking about personal stories, my first okay, chair is not buying any of this. <laughs> All right, go give me your personal story. The first uh, date that I went on with Ladis, he was super decisive. Didn't tell me where we were going until we got there. He took me to a hole in the wall in, um, Hawaiian barbecue place, mm -hmm. and it was literally a hole in the wall. I mean, it looked like a fast food joint, mm -hmm. but the food was incredible, and he knew where he was going. It was awesome. I had a good time, good conversation. He was decisive. That's what I like. Go strong, don't go brown. What if you didn't like the food? What if it happened to not be food that he liked but food that you didn't like? I'm going to be honest with you. The food was, I liked the food. I wasn't crazy about it. It was like kind of greasy and it was a greasy spoon kind of place, right? But I didn't care because I liked the fact that he didn't ask me, okay, so where do you want to go to dinner? And then leave it all up to me to do the planning. I like, look, I, I think this is a thing. It's not only the decisive thing. It's nice to know that your significant other or the guy who's taking you out actually put some thought and energy into the date. He didn't just... Oh, God, that sounds so painful. I know. He didn't just... So, it sounds so tiring. It makes me think, oh, thank God I'm not dating anymore. Oh, thank God. You know, he doesn't just pick you up and leave it all up to you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Oof. Sometimes I look at hot women in the street and I'm relieved. I know. You've told us that before. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, like, I'm being relieved of duty. So, I'm like... Not, not in the street, because I wouldn't have like, been like, hey, hey, how you doing? Hey, come on, let's go, let's go. Chili's or Burger King? Right? <laughs> no, but like, uh -huh. like uh, I was hanging out with a, a, a fairly attractive woman the other day, and I was like, oh, thank God, I don't have to hit on her. Like, it's such a pressure lifted off of me. Uh -huh. uh, in the past, it would have been all this pressure of how do you get her number? Is it going to be awkward? When should I ask? How should I ask? Do I ask now? Do I ask later? La, la, la. Oh, you know? Mm -hmm. Now I'm like, yeah, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I'm married. You can't have me. Ha ah. But isn't the nerve-wracking part fun? For I'm, you, Mr. I'm, Casanova? No, no, but no, it's the thing. No, every, every, Everybody has that nerve-wracking part. It's not like I don't understand where he's coming from because every guy has that. Everybody has that problem. Okay, well, which way do I go? What angle do I take? Oh, am I going to sound stupid? Uh, you know, you want, it, you want it to be right so that you won't get dissed. Nobody likes that. So, but once you get it, that's what makes getting it so much better because you have to wonder how is the best way to go at it. Because you're not going to get 100%. That's what I'm saying. I, I'd be bored if I was like a professional athlete and chicks just, I don't do anything anymore. I'm like, this is boring. Yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't be <laughs> I quite as bored as you are. Okay. The most entertaining part of this is Jesus's reaction to everything JR saying. <laughs> like he either nods or he shakes his head, like in agreement or disagreement. It's great. Uh, can you guess the part he disagreed with? <laughs> Uh, it'd be boring getting all those girls. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But After the first 10, 15, you'd be like, okay, is this the way it's going to be from now on? I, I'm not doing anything more. It's like After the first 100, 150. But look, you see those athletes, you know, Magic Johnson, Will Chamberlain, they go into the thousands, man. It still doesn't get boring for them. Okay. Now, some of them had consequences, but nonetheless. Uh, and look, uh, JR, I'm three quarters away with you. There is a nice nervous buzz to it, and I do like that, okay, to some degree. But you know what, JR, I was 38, man. I held until relieved. You know, <laughs> and at 38, you get a little, like, okay. I, I, I figured out every angle on every play. It's, it's time for retirement. <laughs> okay. And look, I, if I hadn't found Wendy, I wouldn't have retired. Mm -hmm. And I would have gone on forever, and I would have been exhausted by the end. And I would have still enjoyed it to some degree, but all within the bounds of reason. All right, we got one more story real quick before okay. we go to the post-game show. Uh, Wendy Williams, this is uh, Chris Brown. Mm -hmm. And I love this video. We have video of it. Uh, it all started when Chris Brown saw some uh, guy at the airport, and he said, one of the guys looked like Wendy Williams, or was it the other way around? <laughs> uh, so he tweeted that out. Yeah, he tweeted that out. Uh -huh. And uh, Wendy Williams heard about it, and then she had a message for him on her show. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. Let's see what happens. I just learned that Chris Brown was leaving an airport. His Twitter name is Mechanical Dummy. And he <laughs> Twittered that uh, one of the men around him reminded him of me, Wendy Williams. In other words, he's calling me a man. Well, you know what? 
at least if I was a man, then I would spend my time bullying other men, perhaps, and not other women. Mm -mm. No, she didn't. You do. I love Wendy Williams. Oh, I think no. you love every one of these girls. It's hilarious. No. Tyra Banks, Wendy Williams, me, and then maybe you. As, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I, as like what? Best talk show host? <laughs> That's awesome. No, no, no. I'm, hey, I came in fourth. Not bad. <laughs> Better than I do on other lists. <laughs> no, 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 I'm kidding. But the Tyra Banks and uh, Wendy Williams, number one and number two, that's for, uh, definite. That's really funny. Okay, can I say something really rude? I know you're going to say something rude. Yeah, go ahead. I can see it. She does not look like a man. She's just no, a little... No, no, but uh, you know, a little transgender, no. Something, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, Look, if I was going to hook up with Wendy Williams, which she wouldn't hook up with me probably, so just everybody bring it down. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm keeping it real, right? But I'd be like, hey, how you doing? Oh, so you'd want to check like, out the package before you... Like, I'd be like, I don't know. I'd want to be like, you know, I'd want to talk to her a little bit, look at her hands. It's like a Christmas gift. You want to shake the present before you open it. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd be a little careful. All right, now, I'm the bad guy, and I'm no looker, okay? But I'm just keeping it real. That's what I saw. So, But now, if you're Chris Brown, you don't really want to be going there. I oh, mean, this no. is not the time to be throwing bombs. Right, and Chris Brown responded to her message, right? This is what he, what he said. OMG, G, 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 G. Uh, LOL, my Twitter's, <laughs> my Twitter's, uh, my Twitter's making headline TV news now. LOL, Wendy. I got nothing but love for you, boo. Just jokes. L M A O. Uh, T X Z Y P R T. <laughs> no, no, I'm familiar with all those, but nonetheless. Right. Okay, I get enough letters. Um, and finally, I don't think Wendy, Wendy Williams' comeback was okay. I just like the sauciness. <laughs> like, I, I like the sauce in the delivery. <laughs> You're a sucker for saucy. I am, I am. All right. Uh, Post-game show's coming up. We interview the legendary Dave Kohler. God knows what's going to happen. It's going to be like a box of chocolates. All right. We'll see you there, Young Turks. I'm feeling like